fair slobber out in the muck. They're the trucks, they're not too far from the gap. Hello and welcome to a wet and mucky Sullivan's farm. Not everything is out in the wet and the muck though. A couple of them, as you saw the last day, cattle are in the yard here. And I've also picked out four bullocks that I'm trying to finish and fatten at the moment as well, just in the last few days. So they're across here in the new shed on their own. And as ever, I need to put straw under them. They're being built up to two kgs of cubes. They won't break the scales whenever they do go, but there'll be four more heading in the right direction. And there'll be a few quid to pay the bills when they're gone as well. So we'll see how they go. I'm happy enough with them so far. They should be all about the 550 kgs. When they do go, um, we'll show you them from this angle. They always look nice from this angle, if you can kind of see them. They always look nice and wide. That red lad, he's a limousine. He just hasn't kind of, he settled, but I don't know, does he miss his mates across the way here? But he's just not as happy or as content as the other ones. They barely noticed. They're just glad of the extra space. But yeah, you're coughing on camera. Good man. I'm not trying to tell him everything is healthy here. This lad, we'll keep an eye on him for a few days. All going well. It is just the change of air. Three yards away from where he was is bothering him. And as ever, there's a few last minute repairs to stop water trucks from leaking. The pipe was in a bit too close and the ball cock was angled back like that and it wasn't cutting out early enough to stop the water from leaking out. So we fixed that too though. There's a tool for everything. Right, we go out to see the muck and the wet. Now, uh, thankfully, it's not too far from the shed. There's where the bigger cattle are. And we're heading over where the meal bin is in the distance. So. I left him into it about a week ago. And it was a bit of a relief, to be honest, to start the torture of the next four months because Ara, they just weren't settled outside. The grass was too wet and it was raining and it was miserable. And I didn't want to give them a round feeder with a bale of silage because it would have been just more mess outside. So bit the bullet, left them into it. Fair slobber out in the muck. They're the trucks, they're not too far from the gap. They're getting just over a kilo of cubes now. Um, and there's a bit of a balancing act to be found. I cut them back a little bit because I didn't think they were eating the fodder rape as well as they could have been eating it. And the wire has to move sort of at a similar pace to match how they're getting through the bales. Now, that's a poor old patch there. But they didn't really eat, they're full. So as they eat the bale, I'll move the round feeder onto that one the next time. You can see, I wasn't going to say it, but they broke through the wire last night. In fairness, they didn't break through the wire. The wire, one of the permanent wires, one of the permanent stake and wire setups here, broke. I don't know what happened to it. Just the wire came, came off last night. And when that came off then, the wire, this wire that it's, it's hooked onto, from there, going over to the far side there, we'll see it in a minute. That fell too. So they got into the fodder rape. This is my third year. Started the third year doing it. And it's the first time ever they've broke through it. Um, they didn't do that much damage in fairness. They ate a few of the tops, all right, more than they should. And there's the odd hole in a bale, but other than that, it could have been an awful lot worse. So there's a balancing act. And because they're full now, they haven't grazed that back. The wire has to move, as I said, every time the bale is finished, we move it on to the next one. And the wire obviously then here has to go up as well. And they're just not eating it fast enough. So that's why I'm thinking of cutting them back a little bit in the cubes. Now I know some lads don't give many cubes at all when they're out on fodder rape and silage. And I might get to that stage, but I'll just reduce it for now anyway. And we'll see how that goes first. One thing that people might find useful you can see it like there's a fair height, it's up to the top almost of the white stakes as you go along there. It's, it's almost too strong. I think that's why they're not getting through it as quick or as, as, as kind of as balanced as, as last year. 
but there's a big stalk on it as well which obviously isn't of much use because they can't eat or they don't eat the stalk maybe there's, there's just too much of a leaf on it too so two things I'm taking from that the weather had an impact the ground was warm it was mild and warm all along there since it was set well it was set two weeks earlier than last year and that gave it an extra two weeks to get this strong I put out a similar amount of fertilizer if I set it a fortnight later and maybe instead of putting out three bags of 24 two and a half ten I put out two and a half bags or maybe even two bags probably still be enough in it to keep them going you can see again they're they're just kind of walking through it they walked through that bit of it there where they went through it last night so yeah there, there's a couple of things if it was set a fortnight later and i used a little bit less fertilizer i wouldn't really be upset about it but we'll see might all change next year again this is this permanent wire and stakes that broke last night um this is the equivalent of that down at the far side there in the distance so when that broke this wire along here then fell on the ground and then this wire going over here fell on the ground and they went into it so as i said it could have been worse but hopefully it doesn't happen again we'll have to do some serious repair if it does happen again here are the other six i showed you previously as well they're still out on grass on this side so the rape father rape is here there on the other side so there's no fear of them. we'll have a closer look they can follow me over for their few cubes as well now but yeah they're doing well nice milky british friesian holstein heifers i'm happy enough with them there's one of them there she it looks like she kind of has a seven on her forehead she's a bit small now there's a shine on her i'm sure i showed you her before like she's a half uh, half a show on them and stopped at you but hopefully she gets big enough and she gives enough milk that's the main thing whether it's here or someplace else as long as she gives enough milk we don't be in mind how big or small she is i'm just after giving them their cubes here now and there's a shine on them there's no fear of them <laughs> and just lest anybody think i'm trying to show you all the good stuff the plan is constantly evolving around here and i just picked out this this one here from the main bunch that are in on the fodder rape and she's going to join the six out here because i don't know she's even a tiny bit lame we'll keep an eye on her she's just that little bit small hello aren't you very friendly and yeah i had the pick of grass that doesn't look great now but it's not as bad off camera you can take my word for that it's not as bad off camera so we give her an extra few cubes and an extra bit of grass and i'd be throwing out a bit of silage from the round feeder out to him here as well and we'll see go on <laughs> go away told you before that's an expensive camera so the plan evolves and we'll see what we'll do these seven might go into the shed where the four big bullocks are when they're gone in six weeks eight weeks time we'll put these in on straw at that stage or you wouldn't know what we do <laughs> the plan is always evolving around here anyway that's for sure what's also evolving is the plant milk cows around here there's lots of dry boring work going on in the background there with spreadsheets and endless phone calls and meetings with banks and other advisors and bits and pieces like that when there's something of interest or something of use to people i'll let you know but till then the dry homework goes on but what i am doing is clearing out the third span of the cubicles here to see if a milk and parlor might fit in here ideally it would be an eight unit maybe a ten unit parlor two foot six centers and the bulk tank and the dairy would go then at the far up end coming in that door in the distance so i'm just waiting on a man to call to give his opinion on that all going well i have a second hand parlor sourced if everything works out i will go from there but for now to balance off the spreadsheets and the phone calls i come over here and do a bit of clearing out it's kind of therapeutic so it is away from the spreadsheets and uh, all the rest of it so that's it for this video then we're into the winter routine 
And as mucky and all as it is, and as wet as it is, I'm kind of glad it's something of a routine after the messing with the last few weeks of shifting the cattle here and shifting them there, and is it too wet and isn't it too wet? A bit of routine is welcome after that. So mind yourselves, we'll talk to you soon. Good luck.